In this video, I'm going to show how you can build a Chrome extension with Bubble that allows you to bookmark certain pages. So you'll see here when I click on this Chrome extension that's been built with Bubble. I'm saving each plugin page here as a bookmark. So if I click on this, you'll see we get a new entry here. And when we click on our save plugin, we're brought to the plugin page. So just a good way to remind yourself of plugins you may have noticed in the past and want to come back to. So I've started up a brand new Bubble app. And in order to turn this Bubble app into a Chrome extension, I'm going to use Charles. Charles is a Bubble plugin and a framework that makes it really easy to turn your Bubble app into a Chrome extension. So if you head over to buildwithcharles.io and click on the Get Started for Free button, you're going to be able to access the Charles source code. So I'm going to click on Get Now, and then I'm going to enter a few details here. And once I've created an account and I've accepted the terms of service, I can get the source code new product and click on download and you'll see then that we have the zip file downloaded and we can use that to create a Chrome extension. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unzip this. That's my downloads. I'm going to double click on that and then we're going to get this folder which is essentially the Charles extension source code and then I'm going to open this up in a code editor. So I'm going to use Visual Studio Code, but you can really use any text editor you want or anything like that just to make one or two small changes to the source code. So I'm going to go and find Visual Studio Code. And then I'm going to open that file that I've just downloaded. Now, this may be a bit intimidating looking if you're not a developer, but I promise we don't actually have to change that much here. And in fact, what we can do is just to show you how this works is I'm actually going to upload it as it is without making a single change. So you could do this without actually even opening it up in a code editor. But if I go to Chrome and I click on this icon here, which allows me to manage my extensions, what I can do is I can click on Load Unpacked, and this is how we upload our code to Chrome. If I go to my downloads where I just downloaded that Charles source code and select that. Okay, we now have our extension installed. I've added an action that basically brings you to the welcome page the very first time you do it. But what you can do is if you actually want to see how it looks is you can go to extensions, you can pin the Charles extension there and now we have access to this pop-up and you'll see that we're loading up a bubble app there. So this is the kind of Charles demo app. It shows off a bunch of the features that comes with the Charles plugin, but we obviously want to create our own bookmark manager. We're not going to be using the default demo app. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add in a text element here. Maybe just add in a group first actually. So put a group in here and call this group main container. And we'll make it a, take up the full height of the page, put a small bit of padding on it. And then just to show that this is our app, I'm going to put a text element in here and say plugin bookmarks. Make that a bit bigger, put it in the center there, and also put it in the center of the page. So now, if I just take a look at what I have here, I don't want to deploy, but if we take a look at this in preview mode, this is how our bubble app is going to look. And we essentially want to show this in our extension pop-up here. And this is really easy to do. All you need to do is you need to take the URL associated with your bubble app. So I'm going to take everything, get rid of the debug mode, keep in version test for now, and then go back into your source code. And we're going to go into the popup.js file here, and we're just going to replace this URL here, which is the demo app, with our new one. So I'm going to paste that in. I'm going to save this. So I'm going to go to File, Save, and then I'm going to go back to my extensions, and I'm simply going to click the Refresh button. You don't need to load the extension code up again. You just need to click that Refresh button. And now, if I click on my extension, you'll see we have our plugin bookmarks. So that's the first step in getting your own app to show up as a Chrome extension. 
just a quick note so I'm going to have set the dimensions on my page here to be equal to 640 height 320 width and this is matching what is in the pop-up.html so if you wanted to change the width and height so let's say you wanted to go to you know 360 you would change in your bubble app but you'd also put in 360 here and save it it just makes it easier if the dimensions of your bubble app are the same as the dimensions of your Chrome extension. But now that we've done this, we can actually start putting in stuff in our bubble app and it's going to appear in our Chrome extension. So what I want to do is I essentially want to, in my database, I want to save down some of the plugins that I would like to keep a note of for maybe future reference. So you can see here, I've created a data type called plugin. It only has two fields, link, which is going to be the URL and the name of the plugin. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a button. So if we go here, drag this on the page, change this to outline, change the main height as well. And I'm just going to change the label here to save plugin. So every time a plugin is going to be added to our database, we're going to click that button and then we're going to create a new thing. The thing we're going to create is plugin and the fields we're going to change are link and name. Now, what we really want to happen is if we are on a particular page, so let's say we're on the plugin page of this PDF creator, which is a Cran for Tech plugin, and let's say we want to save this down for you know future use in the future, or we just want to kind of keep a note of it, we want to, when we click this button, we basically want to populate the link with the URL and we want to get the name as well. Now, in order for Charles or our Chrome extension to access elements on the page, we're going to need to install the Charles Chrome extension builder plugin. So you can find that by going to the plugins tab of your bubble editor, searching for Charles, and you can see it's going to show up there. Now, once you've installed this, we're going to have access to a bunch of elements. And the first element that I want to highlight is the Charles tab info one. We're going to drag this onto our canvas. I'm going to put this down last. Even though it's showing up here, it's not actually going to appear for the end user. And one thing I might do now is just apply a bit of gap spacing between my elements. But because we have this here, what we can do is when the save plugin button is clicked, what we can do is we can say link is equal to Charles tab info A. And you can see here we can access the tab URL, the tab title. I want the tab URL in this case because that is going to be essentially the URL here. So just to show you what happens now, when we click on this, and we click on Save Plugin, if we go into our database, we should see that we now have a link to the PDF Creator plugin. So that's a good first step. We obviously also want the name as well to go with this. I'm just going to delete that for now. And we can add another element to our canvas in order to access that information. So it's going to be Charles Element text so i'm going to grab that on i'm going to make this last again and again this won't appear but you'll see here there's only one field and the field is selector and if we look at the documentation associated with this we can see we're basically going to be using a dom document query selector to get a single element and again i know we're kind of veering more towards code here but it's pretty simple so what we're going to do is back on our pdf creator page i'm just going to look at the information i think i want to get so Obviously, the text I want to extract from here with the Chrome extension is PDF Creator, which is here and here. And I think this is probably a good candidate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this. I'm going to right click and I'm going to click Inspect. And you'll see here the selector associated with this element is H1. So what I can do now is because this is the first H1 to appear on the page, and to be fair, this wouldn't work if there was 17 different H1s and they were further down, but this is quite convenient. If I go to Charles and I type in H1, and then I go to my workflow, I can say name is going to be equal to Charles element text A, it's element text. So let's try that again. I'm going to close that down, but we're going to open up our Chrome extension, save plugin. And in our database now, we have the name and we have the link associated with that plugin. Okay, so now that we have the information, we can start actually showing it in a repeating group in our Chrome extension. So I'm going to go and search for a repeating group. I'm going to drag this in, just do a quick bit of formatting. And I'm actually just going to fast forward through this so you can concentrate on the Chrome extension stuff.
Okay, I've done some formatting there. So now if we open up our Chrome extension, we should see that we have that PDF creator plugin saved down. I can't currently access it, which is kind of the point of the extension. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a workflow to this. And I'm going to say when it's clicked under plugins, we have this option here, Charles, open new tab. And the URL we're going to open is parent groups plugins link. I'm also just going to apply some formatting so that when this is hovered, it's underlined. Okay, let's see how that looks. We open up our extension. We have our saved plugin. Click on that and it opens that up nicely. But let's go and look at some other ones and save them down. So let's say I like, what kind of plugins here do we want? Classify, very useful plugin. So let's say I wanted to save that down to my Chrome extension. Click on that. And if we click on that, it should appear down there. And then I can open that up from any other page at a future time. And we have access to that again. So that's how you build the kind of basic bookmark manager Chrome extension. There's a couple of things maybe just to point out here. So maybe from a kind of user experience perspective, if they've already saved down the classified plugin. You may not want them to kind of do it again because you end up with duplicates. So what I would do is I would do something like, you know, when this button is clicked, you are going to create a new plugin entry, but only when do a search for plugins where the name is equal to Charles elements text count is zero okay so just to go over that what are we saying we're saying search all our database and if there's any plugins where the name is equal to the name we're saving down then this count is going to be greater than zero so we're only going to run this when there isn't already plugins saved down with this name now what we can do is we can say uh if there already is one saved down Charles comes with this option here. If we go to Charles, show alert, and the alert is going to be you've already saved this plugin. But we're only going to show that when do a search for plugins count is greater than zero. And again, the condition is going to be where the name is equal to Charles element text a it's element text so if for example we've already saved down the classify plugin if we try to save it again we get this alert instead and we're not going to get a second duplicate we already have the first duplicate here might just delete that to keep things nice and tidy and then the other thing is you may not want users to be able to run this action here unless they're specifically on like a bubble.io slash plugin page. You know, if for example, we're on a page like this, which isn't really related to what the plugin is intended to do. And I click on this and I click on save this plugin. We end up with F1 saved down because that's the H1 tag. And we have a link to it, which obviously isn't really the intended purpose of the plugin. So what we can do is we can add in another condition to our workflow action where we're creating a new plugin entry in our database. And we can say, we're only going to add in a new plugin when it doesn't exist, but also when, and we're gonna to go to our Charles tab info, when we're saying the tab URL contains arbitrary text, and the arbitrary text is going to be bubble.io slash plugin, which is on every single bubble plugin page. So this time, if we go to the Sky Sports homepage, and we click on this and we try and save a plugin. We're seeing that nothing happens here. And in our database, we're not getting anything new. Now, we should probably add an alert just to show what's happening to the end user. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Charles, show alert. The alert I'm going to show is you must be on a bubble plugin page to save data. But we're only going to run this when Charles tab info a and then the tab URL doesn't contain 
arbitrary text. And again, we're simply going to type in bubble.io slash plugin. So this time, when I try and create a new plugin entry from a non-plugin page, I'm going to click on that. And you can see you must be on a bubble plugin page to save data. But if I go back to the plugin marketplace, and I want to save down the toolbox plugin just for future reference. If I click on my extension, save plugin, you'll see it shows there and I can find it whenever I want. So that's how you build a bookmark Chrome extension with Bubble and Charles. Hope this has been useful. If you have any questions, you can let us know in the comments below.